Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. President Trump is visiting the U.S. border with Mexico today. I'm Laura Podesta. I'll tell you about his latest threat against Mexico if the country does not stop the flow of drugs and asylum seekers into the U.S. And in Bozeman, a woman was shot severely injured last night. Coming up, what police are saying about the incident that happened on the west side of Bozeman. I'm at Ayers Bab, and later on, I'll let you know if you could see an economic boost with over 300 employees coming to the View Plaza Mall. Good morning to you, and welcome to your Friday. Coming up, uh, it is 629 right now. I'm Missy O'Malley with Chet Lehman. I was going to say, coming up on 630. Funny how that time just keeps it, rolling. It, it is. It, it just <laughs> does that, doesn't it? Our top story for you now. President Trump heads to Calexico, California today to visit a remodeled section of an existing border fence that was built during Vietnam War. Yesterday, he retreated from his threat to shut down the U.S.-Mexico border to stop illegal immigration. But as CBS's Laura Podesta reports, he has a new economic warning. President Trump is backing away from his threat to immediately close the U.S.-Mexico border. We're going to give him a one-year warning, and if the drugs don't stop or largely stop, we're going to put tariffs on Mexico and products, in particular cars. The whole ball game is cars. It's a quick turnaround from just last week. So there's a very good likelihood that I'll be closing the border next week. When he demanded Mexico stop all illegal immigration to the U.S. We'll keep it closed for a long time. I'm not playing games. The change of strategy is welcome news to even members of his own party, including both Republican senators from Texas. But we shouldn't be punishing law-abiding, American businesses. It would cause as much damage to the U.S. economy as it would to uh, the Mexican uh, economy. Though implementing auto tariffs would cause its own economic headache for American businesses. And it does nothing to stop the current flow of migrants across the border. Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen says her department is experiencing a system-wide meltdown as it struggles to deal with a surge of asylum seekers. We cannot protect American sovereignty, enforce its immigration laws, or keep criminals from exploiting our system without something changing. Yesterday, House Democrats voted to authorize a lawsuit challenging President Trump's national emergency declaration to complete a border wall. Laura Podesta, CBS News. Now, Laura tells us plans to restore the fence at Calexico uh, that President Trump will be visiting today began back in 2009 during the Obama administration. A plaque with President Trump's name and other immigration officials will be placed on it. 631 now, meteorologist Matt Elwell joins us. Uh, some rain this morning. Yeah. Sounds like that's going to be a possibility for the next couple of days. Uh, certainly the showers will probably pick up in intensity today. I think today's our best potential seeing some of the heavier rain. Then we'll see some scattered showers after that. Uh, starting out the morning into the 30s, our temperatures have dropped down a few degrees early on. We were actually in the mid 30s here uh, just this past hour. Um, the showers are probably going to be picking up in intensity for the afternoon. In fact, there is a good chance that we could hear a rumble of thunder for a few areas late in the afternoon. Temperatures trying to warm up today. Slight cool down for tomorrow. We'll talk more about your complete forecast, of course, in just a few minutes. Thank you, Matt. 632 now. A uh, story from last night, breaking news. A woman taken to the hospital after a shooting on Bozeman's west, li west side last night. MTN's Cody Boyer went to the scene and tells us what police were saying. That's right. Details right now are limited, but the Bozeman City Police Sergeant does tell me that one woman has indeed been sent to the hospital with unknown injuries and one man has been taken into custody. They do also say that any imminent danger here was wrapped up very quickly after this incident and they do believe whatever happened was an isolated case. We are bringing you more developing details as we learn more from, of course, the Bozeman City Police who are here, who do want want to remind once again that there is no further threat to the public around this scene here at the Wagon Wheel Trailer Park off of 23rd, just off of West Main Street. And one more time, we do know that one woman was sent to the hospital and another and a man was taken into custody. We will bring you the latest details as we learn them from police. For now in Bozeman, Cody Boyer, MTN News. So we do have an update for you on this story and we are keeping you updated online. The suspect will be potentially appearing in court today, potentially on homicide charges. We will keep an eye out and let you know as this develops.
That's right, more news online and on air on this uh, breaking news story. Meantime, we're going to shift gears just a little bit. A New York man in court yesterday in Missoula on accusations of making false statements involving international terrorism and firearms charges. 21-year-old Fabian Almedi was arrested on Thursday at a shooting range in Bozeman. Almedi was recently traveling through Montana. Officials with the FBI field office in Salt Lake City say officers arrested Almedi without the incident, without incident at the shooting range after he took possession of an M1A rifle. Now they say he has no known ties to Montana or any affiliation with the Muslim community in Bozeman. We'll have more information on this story as it becomes available. Mining City Headlines, Butte Silver Bow Police Department completed a special training session at the old Burt Mooney Airport yesterday. Officers went through a drill in which they used what's called a wall banger to break open a door. $5,000 tool uses a flash bang, bang explosive to break off the door handle. Under uh, Sheriff George Skulatich uh, says it's crucial to work on these skills to be able to help in a crisis situation. It's nothing until you get in there and, and experience the, the uh, concussion of the grenade or of the uh, flashbang going into the room, um, looking at the door, seeing how it does go through the doors, what else you have to do once you get in there. So it is a, it, there's nothing like hands-on experience. School just says these training sessions are rare because officers can only do them when vacant buildings are available. And two new Bozeman police officers were sworn in yesterday. One officer is headed to Helena to begin training at the Montana Law Enforcement Academy. The other will start in the field training immediately. Also, Bozeman PD hosted its annual departmental awards ceremony. So congratulations. 635 now, the main budget bill for state government sailing through the 2019 legislature at a record pace. But as MTN's Mike Denson reports, some spending priorities and other pieces of the budget have yet to be worked out. On a bipartisan 27-22 vote, the state Senate advanced House Bill 2, which is the pillar of Montana's $10 billion two-year budget. It funds our schools, keeps the schools open, keeps the prisons closed, and it keeps the snowplows running on time. That's, that's what it does. The only lengthy floor debate came over money for assisted living homes, which say without higher reimbursement rates, they often can't accept more state-funded residents. Republican Senator Bob Keenan of Big Fork proposed an amendment to raise those rates so these elderly in need of help could avoid going to a more expensive nursing home. The facilities that provide these services cannot afford at $95 a day to take care of these elderly, Medicaid-eligible Montana folks. So they end up being put into nursing homes at $202 a day. His amendment lost on a 23-24 vote with nine Democrats and 14 Republicans opposing it. Another similar amendment failed, but Republican Senate Majority Leader Fred Thomas promised a special effort would be made to insert the funding in a separate bill. It's possible that House Bill 2 could be sent to Governor Steve Bullock in its current form. But Democratic leaders and the governor himself say the budget debate at the 2019 legislature is far from over. If we think that the game's over, uh, if House Bill 2 gets to my desk, no, the legislature still has a heck of a lot of work to do because we've got to pay for the government that people expect. On the Senate floor Thursday, Minority Leader John Sesso of Butte brandished a list of scores of bills still alive that spend money or hand out tax credits and cuts. He said many are sponsored by majority Republicans, and if the budget is to balance, a lot of them must die. And we've got to be vigilant in these next couple weeks to make sure that all our bases are covered and that we keep this budget in the black, we keep it balanced. We also have some other big money issues to settle, like Medicaid expansion and infrastructure. And a few tax increases may be in the mix as lawmakers reach the budget finish line. At the Capitol, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Senate committees will take up both the Medicaid expansion and infrastructure bills today. And we'll have more at 530 and 10 o'clock on that as well. Certainly. Uh, Butte Silver Bowl County uh, growing each year, but at a slow pace. The growth rate is between a quarter of a percent to a half percent, but that could be changing soon. MTN's Madaris Bab has our story. We're definitely not headed backwards, but we're also not skyrocketing like some of the some of our neighboring communities. From 2010 to 2017, Butte Silver Bowl only grew by about 400 people. But with first call resolutions coming into town, hundreds of positions need to be filled. Executive Director of the Butte Local Development Corporation, Joe Willauer, says the steady growth in the past gives Butte an advantage. 
I don't know of any other communities that have the can-do attitude, and I think that stems from our mining legacy. But as we grow in a incremental fashion, we're able to keep that culture that makes Butte what it is and such a great place to live while also looking to the future and inviting new companies like FCR to join us. The call center will house about 350 employees in the Butte Plaza Mall, making it one of the top five employers in Silver Bow County. Because of this, Community Development Director Karen Burns believes the city will start to benefit in other areas as well, including retail, the food industry, and real estate. I always like to say, you know, everybody says the rising tide lifts all boats, but it will in all areas because we do have an opportunity. Um, we have we have housing that's available. Um, it might need to be upgraded or things might need to happen to that, but those owners will have a chance to provide housing for these folks coming into our community. So I look at it as a very great opportunity. FCR has already started its hiring process by looking for employees in the northwest region of the country. Reporting from Butte, Madeira's Bab, MTN News. Now the call center is expected to open this summer. Well, new growth going on at the east end of Bozeman uh, as well. This week, a developer filed plans for a new three-story commercial building in the Bozeman Commons area. 45,000 square foot building to be built by Locati Architects is already uh, planning on having several businesses move in, including DA Davison. Uh, the rest still in the works, with architects saying the space will be flexible, could house retail businesses, offices, possibly even a restaurant or a cafe. Downtown Bozeman Partnership says the buildings could bring more traffic uh, into the heart of the city. The upcoming downtown plan really emphasizes that uh, although Downtown is the, the heart and soul of, of our thriving city. These other growing commercial districts are actually a good thing for downtown and that we need to explore how we can have synergies with Midtown and the cannery. Now, no word yet on when that construction will begin. And we do have an update for you from this overnight shooting that we just mentioned a moment ago. While there is still, still no word on the condition of the shooting victim, Gallatin County Detention Center lists 50-year-old man William Bailey as being held with no bond on deliberate homicide charges. The suspect could appear in court as early as today. Of course, we'll keep you updated online and on air with new developments. Absolutely. We do have to take a quick break. Stay